right, hey, and welcome to our third installment on our uh, porting video series here at Rottler Manufacturing. In this segment, uh, we're going to continue where we left off. Uh, we've gone over the setup, we've gone over digitizing with the probe on the machine. If you haven't taken a look at those, go ahead and go back, watch those. There's a lot of good information in that. Uh, in this one, we're going to talk and kind of show the process for manipulating that digitized data. When we get that digitized data, it's just a series of, we have our planes and, and our cross sections that are just a series of points that it's kind of done a best fit curve. Uh, you know, every port is gonna have a guide in it, and as you go around and digitize that guide, that data is gonna be picked up too. And you're gonna get probably some discrepancies on those surfaces. So you have to go back and kind of smooth those out. Um, if you didn't want to do that process, you know, something that would be helpful in the digitizing process is using some modeling clay um, or putty to kind of smooth out around that guide so that it'll actually pick up a, a, a molded surface instead of having kind of these voids. Um, but if you don't, like we did, then you just have to go back and manipulate it uh, in the software on the machine. The other side of the manipulation is if you want to go back and change the cross sections you know maybe there's an area that has a restriction in that port we can go back in to those cross sections and we can increase that cross-sectional area and change the geometry of the port right on the machine um, so let's hop in here and take a look at the screen and we'll go ahead and uh, and show you just how we're manipulating this information so on our on our screen here we have our planes and we can see the blue cross sections uh, on each of those planes. Now if I click here, I'm in our program tab, if I click on one of these, we'll see over here on the right uh, this digitized information. So these are all the points that the probe touched, and we can see the line segments in between it. Now what I like to do is I'll just go down, so I'm starting at the seat side here, and we're going to just go down and click through these. And as I go through them, I can turn the ones above off, uh, if I think they look okay. And at some point here, we're going to start seeing where we picked up guides. So we're seeing you know, a guide profile here on this cross section, and then we have our dividing section here. And so when we get this dividing section, you know, the probe probably fell into a void or fell into the guide here. And we can see kind of this information here that's, that's not smooth, and we need to correct it. So what we can do is, is the easiest. The first thing is we can just grab these points and we can manipulate them just by simply dragging and dropping. And we can pull them and push them uh, and just kind of move them around to, to smooth this feature out. We can also select multiples at a time, so we can drop box, grab three at a time, and kind of just drag and drop. And we'll just kind of estimate it and make this look a little better here. just to correct that data. Uh, we can also delete, you know, we have a lot of points in here, so if we want to make this a little bit smoother, less data will make it smoother, so we can go in and delete you know, every other point in here. Again, for the most part, we'll be cutting air around the guide, so we don't need that much data. And then we can also move these, uh, these points along the line. We don't have to move them out. And that kind of gives us our, our generic smoothing at a base base level. More points down here. Okay, so once I've manipulated that, I have some other options. I can right click over here and I have manipulation operations. The main one you want to use is smooth. If I just leave it on the default and click OK, you can see this smoothed this profile. So it gave it a better fit now that I deleted data and kind of moved things around. And you can maybe do that for you know both the sections around whatever you've manipulated above and below, just to, to smooth that stuff in. We have some more information that can be obtained from this. It's a pretty powerful system. If I go up to the Show tab here, I can show the section before and the section after. So if I wanted to, you know, again, these are all going to create a surface based on these, these cross sections. So making things smooth between the cross sections can be helpful. So being able to see them both on this screen, I can see what it's going to have transition to, and I can manipulate and change 
these transitions between these, again, just by dragging and dropping. Kind of split the difference here. So really, you know, it, it's up to you and what you're doing, but the rot recording software makes this pretty simple. And same thing, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, not only cleaning up the data, but maybe I'm down here, out into where I go to, into the longest portion of the runner. And if I wanted to increase this or change this geometry, I could come in here, right, and I can increase this cross section by simply just dragging and dropping. I grab these points, I can grab multiples at a time, delete a few in the middle here, and again, smooth it back out just to increase that port wall or change that shape. So once we have everything where we like it, uh, we're ready to create a toolpath. We have everything kind of smoothed and roughed in. And creating a toolpath is as simple as it gets. What we do is we go down, we have all of our, our cross sections turned on. We're gonna go to our dividing section. We right click on it and we have four options. We, the main one is create uh, two toolpaths and it's gonna make this plane the dividing line. Now we wanna use our dividing section. We could use any of our sections, but usually it's best to use the one that you selected that you know the tool's gonna to reach on both sides. Um, we can do a dimple toolpath where we have two roughing operations. So if you're working with a billet uh, head that you're manufacturing, then you would select one of those roughing from billet operations so that it could spiral out from the center and remove all that material. So I'll select make this the dividing line and make two toolpaths. It'll ask me to select the tool that I want to use. So I'll use my porting tool. And then I'm going to switch to the toolpath tab. When I do that, it's going to automatically calculate the pivot points and it's going to create the toolpath. So once that's done, I'm going to see some lines on here. Red are rapid moves and these green spiral circles in here, that's the actual toolpath. And if I hover over it, I'm going to see my porting tool on that line. Center of the boarding tool is now on this line. If I want to see the surface it's created, I can do show solids. And we can actually see the port that's now been created from those cross sections. And what we want to do is we can take our tool and kind of hover the mouse along this. We want to look and we want to make sure, especially when we're down in the port, that the pivot points that it's calculated are, are not going to cause a shank. So we want to make sure, and we look and make sure that our shank of our tool, that's why we've accurately modeled our tool, isn't going to, uh, to collide with the port itself. And we can also put the tool on all paths to verify. So this will just put it at every location. And this can be a quick way to check. If I saw any gray in here, uh, that would mean that I need to, to manipulate the pivot point. So the pivot points, just to go over those, the pivot point is what it's going to use uh, to kind of pivot the tool around. I'll show them on the screen here. So you can see all these pivot points that it's using. And what that is, is that's where the tool is going to pivot around. And there's one for each plane in each cross section. So we manipulate the pivot points. Um, if we had a collision or a shank that was happening in the port, we can drag and drop here. And we can just simply move this pivot point. It's a small increment. Um, and then when we're done moving it, we can double click to lock it in place. And that'll make sure it doesn't move later on. And then you would regenerate your tool path uh, to adjust for, for any uh, collisions that you have. I want to go back and take a moment just to talk about uh, this cross-sectional information. So when we're manipulating our, our port geometry, we have a little bit of information that we can get. If we select on the port, we can check out our cross-sectional area graph. So this will give us a plot, and it'll tell us the cross-sectional area for each one of those cross-sections uh, as a distance from the seat and as a distance from the manifold itself. So as if we're manipulating this information or manipulating those cross-sections, or we see an area in here that we'd like to make it smoother or make the cross-sections closer, uh, we can go back, change those, and we can see how these sections uh, are plotted against each other on this graph. We can also calculate the volume of the port. So simply right click, calculate volume, and it's telling me now this is 207 cc's. Um, so again, as you manipulate that, if you, wanted, if you have a number you want to hit or a number you say below, 
uh, you can can manipulate those cross section and as those areas are going to change, it'll automatically calculate the port volume for you. So very powerful and very easy to do on the machine. So that pretty much wraps up our uh, manipulation uh, and, and the process for that. So keep in mind we went over manipulating information around guides, around any inaccuracies we get from our digitizing process, and the same rules applied, smoothing, uh, moving and changing the cross sections, calculating volume. That's what you can do and that's what's so powerful and convenient uh, in the Rottler porting software and you're able to do this right here on the machine. So I hope this was helpful, hope this was insightful. Uh, check back for the last uh, installment of this series. We'll just uh, go over transferring these ports over, because again, we just digitized one port, and then we're just gonna copy that over based on the bore spacing, and then we'll go ahead and run the auto cycle on this. Take care.